It sounds like a script from a Hollywood movie. Take a failing school, introduce the performing arts, and watch the transformation take place. Of course, it's not quite that easy, but a few years ago, Orchard Gardens was a very different school. Violence was normal and children carried weapons. No teacher stayed for long. 13-year-old Jemai says he was one of the troublemakers. He says art has changed his life and now he's winning awards for his paintings. It interests me. It keeps me calm whenever I get like upset or so. So I tend to draw when I'm mad. Art became a focal point of the school three years ago when Principal Andrew Bott took over. So this is the center of our school, uh, 900 students. And, you know, what we have is, uh, is, is silence. And we have kids in class working. And, and this, three years ago, this wasn't the case. His first action was to fire security guards and use the money to hire art teachers. There were a lot of people that said, you, you know, wait, wait a year before you eliminate the security. Phase in the arts staff, phase out the security, go through a process. But when I looked at the big picture, it made the most sense to just to go big, go bold, and to do this all at once. If we were going to undergo a transformation, it made the most sense to, to tackle it all together. Ninety percent of the children here live at or below the poverty line. Some are homeless. They even began transferring that photograph onto the large watercolor paper. Now they're part of a government program to test whether arts education can make a difference. There's actually a lot of science and research out there that's come out over the last 10 years, longitudinal studies of tens of thousands of low-income kids that show that low-income kids who are engaged in the arts are three times more likely to have high attendance records. They're four times more likely to be involved in a student club or student government. Um, they are uh, significantly more likely to have higher achievement and to go on to four-year colleges. Orchard Gardens is one of eight schools in the country receiving $2 million over two years for arts education. But this isn't about creating a great arts program. This is about using the arts as a fundamental tool for education. But why does engagement in the arts appear to raise attendance, boost academic achievement, and even reduce behavior problems? Researchers say they still can't prove that the arts alone are responsible. Arts integrated schools tend to have better outcomes than non-arts integrated schools. Unfortunately, the research base hasn't caught up to why this is. I think if you took a candid appraisal of the research literature right now, I would wager a guess that the schools that are arts integrated and have great leaders are probably more engaging places for students to be, and therefore they become more engaged in their schoolwork. Along with art, Jamai has also discovered an interest in music. He says the practice keeps him focused and out of trouble. It keeps me from doing anything bad outside of school and it keeps me like it keeps me to show in other kids that there's always something big out there in the world that you can do. Of all the arts, music is the subject most likely to be taught in schools. But six million children in the US, mostly minorities or living in poverty, have no access to any arts education. Ironically, they may well be the children who need art the most.